it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you another Recent Reads. As always, i got three books to talk about, so let's just get right into it. I'm going to start off by talking about my two book club books for the month. The first one that I finished was um, How the Penguins Saved Veronica by Hazel Pryor. This is a contemporary fiction book about an 86 year old woman named Veronica. Veronica has gone through some hard things in her life, so she's decided that the best way to deal with the world is to shut everybody out. And she likes to spend her days watching TV, particularly um, this show on penguins that's following a particular or research organization down in Antarctica. And one day she decides she needs to start working on her will, and she's going to leave all of her money to this um, place in Antarctica so they can continue their research. But before she does that, she wants to make sure that she doesn't have any family left. She's under the impression that she's been alone for a long time. So she hires a private detective, and she discovers that actually she has a grandson named Patrick. A grandson, oh, grandson. Patrick is kind of a bum. He only has a part-time job, and he spends most of his time um, laying around his apartment smoking weed. And so Veronica is very frustrated and decides she's still going to leave all of her money to the Penguin organization, but she wants to go visit them in Antarctica. So she does, um, despite the fact that they tell her not to come because the conditions are so hard, and we see her relationship with the scientists that work at the Penguin organization in Antarctica, and then we also see how she and Patrick um, begin to build a relationship, despite this bad first impression that they had of each other. And we learn about Veronica's life and why she's so closed up, and we learn how she sort of comes to grips with the things that have happened in her life, and we end up seeing a very big change in her and in her viewpoint in life. So this was a very sweet book. I will say that Veronica was kind of like too grumpy for my taste. I mean, I love older characters in being the star of the books. That's like one of my favorite things in books. But I don't know, Veronica just got on my nerves. And also there was a relationship between Patrick and one of the scientists that felt like instant love because they had only known each other a few weeks and it sort of got on my nerves as well. But overall, I thought this was was a really sweet book and I definitely recommend it. It is a palate cleanser in the best sense of the word and it's just a really fun sweet read and it would be a great book to read in the winter because of course a lot of it is set at, set at Antarctica and it's involving penguins and snow and all that good wintry stuff. But yeah, this was a really sweet read. I then finished my work book club book, and that was The Dutch House by Ann Patchett. This is a, a book I've been meaning to read for a while. I actually read the bulk of it on audiobook, which was narrated by Tom Hanks, which was a really nice questioning experience. Tom Hanks has a lovely voice, as y'all probably know. This is a historical fiction book following a pair of siblings, Danny and Bob, and they live in an old house that was built by some Dutch um, millionaires, the Dutch house, and they live there with their mother and father, and one day their father, their mother disappears, and their father says that she just moved to India, but they don't really know anything else about what happened to her. So they live there with their father and two servants, um, Sandy and Jocelyn, and then one day their father marries a terrible woman named Andrea, and Andrea has two daughters, but the daughters but the families don't ever mesh. It's just kind of a weird living situation. And then one day their father dies and Andrea kicks him out of the house, kicks Maeve and Danny out of the house. And it's about how they struggle after this event and dealing with their feelings about the house and about their father and about their mother. And we see how their lives progress. They end up spending quite a bit of time sitting in their car, um, you know, like, up the road from the Dutch house and discussing their memories and discussing what happened to their mother and what what happened to their father. And we also see how they are 
uh, Maeve in particular is driven by revenge and she has Danny go to medical school because um, their father left them in an educational trust and so she wants to use up all the money before Andrea's daughter can get it and it's just a really interesting book. I won't spoil it but there's some things that happen in, towards the end of the book that sort of bring things into a different light and we see how Danny's family um, he marries a woman named Celeste and they have two children and th we see how th his family is affected by his relationship with love and with the events that happen at the house. And it's just a really interesting book. I will say that the fact that they never really got over this event of Andrea kicking him out sort of bugged me. I sort of felt like at some point they would just get it over it. Especially Danny because he got married and he had this whole new family that he kind of focused his attention on but he just kept focusing on his you know the first family his birth family so it was interesting uh if you like historical fiction and literary fiction I would recommend it to you otherwise you know it's very literary fiction-esque and it's got all the tropes of the family relationships and the drama and the historical setting and you know all this stuff but yeah it was a good book overall and i'm glad i finally got to it finally i finished woman overboard um how passion saved my life by joe kettlesick and this is a book that i actually got but way back in 2016, I was an intern at the universe, the United Methodist Publishing House, and they have an imprint called Fresh Air Books that published this book, and I went to the release party of this edition of the book when I was the intern there, and all of the staff got free books. Uh, my copies actually signed to me because the author addressed them to all of us. So I just had never picked this up because I wasn't really interested in the subject. The, it's a self-help uh plot slash memoir book and it's all about how Joe Kettlesack found passion in different areas of her life. She discusses art, she discusses romance, she discusses vocation and her various jobs and it is a Christian um, non-fiction book so she also discusses the passion of Jesus and the impact that Jesus has had on her life. So it's just, it goes through, every chapter is set in a, def, a different definition of the word passion, so it's uh, developed in that kind of style. It was an interesting book. Uh, there were some very beautiful passages in here, but Joe Kettlesack has a very like flowery writing style that kind of got on my nerves a little bit but overall this was interesting but nothing amazing and I wouldn't really you know recommend it to anybody it sort of struck me as being like a middle-aged woman memoir where like people that are like my mom's age would probably enjoy this but otherwise it was okay, but it was nothing amazing but I'm glad I finally got it off my shelf because it's been there for five years Currently, I am reading The Paris Secret by Karen Swan on audiobook. This is going okay. It's not like that amazing, but I, I'm going to keep listening to it so I can get it read and mark it complete. I'm also reading Mrs. Sherlock Holmes by Brad Ricca, and this is a book that I'm going to do a video on for March Mystery Madness, so you'll hear more about it later. So that's all I've been reading lately. I hope everybody else has been reading something great and you're keeping safe and healthy. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!